Hello, my name is Tim Calvo. I'm with Hosokawa Micron Powder Systems, and today we're going to talk about the operation of the Powder Characteristics Tester Model PTX. What we're going to do is show you the operational startup sequence so that once you have your instrument, you can follow through and perform the various tests that are required. So once the software has been loaded, double click on the icon, and what will occur is that the light would have flashed three times. You may have seen that from behind me. Then what will occur is you will get the main menu. In order to proceed, typically what we have to do is we have to go into the value setting mode, make certain that the COM port has been set properly, which we'll go through a more definitive video in explaining this. And because otherwise, if that COM port is not set up properly, the backlight does not flash and it does not communicate with the software. Additionally, what we need to do is we also need to set up certain parameters such that the camera will provide the proper measurements and what we need to do is define the focal point for the angle of repose and the angle of spatula. That too will go into a little bit more definitive um, description on another video. There are other areas within this particular field or window that we can go through and do setups and security measures and things of that nature, all part of the initial setup. So I'm gonna bypass that a little bit. Maintenance mode, provided your equipment is communicating properly. Let's take, for example, the camera. We can go into the camera. We can turn the backlight on, as you can see the blue light. We then can capture a picture once everything has been determined to be in the proper focal field. We can then take the picture, binarize. Of course, there's nothing there, so we're not going to get a true angle here. Then calculate the angle to determine what's taking place. So in this case, we're not going to get that because we don't have any of the instruments to, to set that up, but that'll be all squared away in the actual setup video. Tapping. Now, I'm going to do this as far as um, Notice the platform has just elevated. Typically you would not use the platform to do this, but just to simulate what takes place to confirm that all is functioning properly. Then we have the shocker, which you cannot see. There's an internal mechanism in here that elevates a consistent weight and drops it from a specific height. The balance, so we can actually come over and confirm communication with the balance. When it turns blue, you have communication. So if I tear the balance here, notice it's being, I can also tear the balance there. Okay. Uh, this particular component is an optional component that's supplied independently. Vibration, we can actually vibrate this and I've got a little tool in here just to give you an idea because it's gonna vibrate. So as you can hear, all right gets rather noisy, so we'll just stop it midstream just to confirm that the vibration is working. Idle, idle start or start idle run is a, another which we can actually flash the lights. That gives you an idea that we've got those communication again. And then the various sensor settings. So we have the tapping sensor, we've already proved that. We have the shocking sensor, which we didn't go through the exercise, but it does function. And now watch when I open the door the indicator shuts down and then we allow the door to close. And notice I let the door close independently on its own. Do not force it. There is a guide belt in here that if you do force it, what you'll do is you'll damage the belt. Okay. All right, once this is all set up, now we get into the starting. To start the measurements, we'll go over here to standard measurement. And as you can see, this screen first pops up. What we do here is we can identify a new measurement, we can identify an open file or open a file, an existing file, start the measurement, and or skip. If I skip, it will ask me for the same information before conclusion of any analysis to save the data. 
what we have ticked off here is the various fields that would be used to, to uh, develop the file name. In this case here, we have the date, we have the sample name, and we have the lot number. All right, so once you put in the date, the sample name, and lot number, what it will do is it will populate it. And as you can see, it just populated in the field here. One thing that is pretty important that unfortunately the machine does not have the capabilities of doing, and that is to determine what the temperature is of the location where the instrument is located. This can be, have a, a critical effect on various powders, especially if they are hygroscopic. So what we'll do is we'll identify the temperature and we identify the relative humidity. You'll also note that it has the ability here, depending upon how many people that have been assigned to have the uh, rights to work with the instrument and what their capacity is. You have your administrators, you have your technicians, you have a various uh, array of people that could be working with the instrument and they will have certain levels of, uh, let's say, ability to change some of the parameters. Uh, in this case here, we don't have anyone, so it's just not set there. You can put the company name. In many cases, what I put there is that I may say, well, it's for research and development, or it may be for um, production, or it could be for quality control. Company, or pardon me, division, again, you can identify an individual's name if you wanted to from that aspect. Notes, you have approximately 175 characters to fill notes throughout. So if you're performing an analysis and you use a different screen, what you want to do is keep a record copy of it, which then becomes a permanent part of the analysis. Once these fields have all been populated, what we then do is we hit start measurement and it then takes us back to the standard measurement menu and we can perform any of these tests at any time. They do not have to be performed in sequence. However, my suggestion and recommendation is perform your angle measurements first because in that case if your material happens to be cohesive, it's not going to affect any of the measurements and then do your density tests and then your cohesion tests. So once the test has been performed, the icon will become gray rather than black. All right. And then you can just save and close and notice that we already had that. We identified the test name and we closed it out.